my God. Come on, clap your hands. Stand on your feet and put your hands together and tell him thank you. His glory is here. Woo! What a mighty God we serve. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians 1. Ah, yes. Are you there? Scoot down to verse 18. I'm going to read uh, through verse 22. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the world? Hath not God made foolishness the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask for your presence to continue to rest upon this house and to rest upon this frail body of mine so that as we minister today, it would not be just self-serving words of self-aggrandizement, but words of wisdom, words of love, and most of all, power will touch the hearts of men in Jesus name I'm going to use for a topic the power of preaching say that with me the power of preaching yes the power of preaching preaching the Bible declares here in the text foolishness uh, and it is declared the foolishness by those who are foolish uh, because they have made choice to serve uh, the creation uh, over the creator. And uh, the wisdom of God uh, defies natural and uh, human uh, knowledge. Uh, it, is, it, is, it, it defines or defies human wisdom because it's not humanly possible for a woman to give birth to a child without the seed of a man. Uh, but the preaching of the gospel proves that it is possible. With God, all things are possible. Uh, it's not humanly possible for a dead man uh, to be raised from the dead. Uh, but the preaching of the gospel prove that the dead can be and have been raised to include Christ himself whom the Lord allowed to be smitten on a tree and he died on that cross and was put in a grave but three days later he was raised by the power of the gospel which was preached by the apostles immediately afterwards because of the effects of that preaching and we can see unveiled in scripture that when the, the word was preached and heard uh, thousands
thousands came and bowed their knees because they wanted to, to be saved from the wrath of God. Uh, it's not humanly possible uh, to create a world out of thin air. But that is precisely what God did through his power. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made with the things that do appear. In other words, uh, what the scripture is telling us, uh, what we see did not appear in and of itself, but it was indeed the, the faith of God and the power of God that spoke into existence by his faith-filled word. And the Bible declares uh, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. In other words, God spoke the Word, and the Word produced the effect. And so the power of preaching tells us that when we speak God's Word, when we speak it under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, Somebody is supposed to hear the word and be affected by it. The Bible also declares that the wisdom of this world is foolishness because if a man does not understand the workings of God, if his heart is still blinded uh, by sin, if he still has the veil of sin over his heart, then he is incapable of understanding the principles of God. And that's why the Bible declares that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. And so we have to be born anew by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit works on the inside of us, a transforming process begin to take place. And that's why the folk would sing back in the day, when I looked at my hand, my hands looked new. When I looked at my feet, they did too. I had a new walk. I had a new talk. It's something about the power of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that transformed heart. And we have been given a mandate by God to preach the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. In fact, Paul says, Woe is me if I refuse to preach the gospel. Romans 10 and 14 says, How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard of? And how shall they hear except a preacher comes to preach? And then it says, how shall they preach unless they have been called by God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the vineyard to minister the gospel to a hurting and dying world. We need the gospel. If, if we ever needed the gospel before, we need it now. We're getting wiser in the world, but we're getting weaker because all of the technology and modern advancement seems to be sucking the wind out of the souls of so many people, and they're distracted, and they're not able to see God because of all the clutter and that's why it's imperative that the gospel be preached with the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost so that the hearts of mankind can hear the word of God and come rushing to the altar and say what must I do to be saved and so we must preach we, we, we can't just preach but we must preach that, that is relevant for the power of the gospel is the power to transform life. And we must have a relevant gospel. That word relevant simply means to be pertinent. 
applicable. It means to, to be germane or appropriate for the time. In other words, we can't be so heavenly minded with our gospel until we are of no earthly good. The world around us need to hear the gospel and if necessary, use words. In other words, the life that you live is the greatest preacher that any man would ever hear because you reproduce what you really are. You say what you know, but your heart reproduces what you are, and that's why it's so critical that we mirror this gospel. Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, first of all, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, acceptable, holy, which is your reasonable service unto the Lord. And so our gospel must be relevant. Relevance has all to do with the type of preaching that alerts the hearer about the imminent consequences of a life that is lived without God, a life that is lived that is laden with sin. There are consequences to a life that is lived without God. Sin is a willful transgression and rejection of the knowledge and the word of God. And your sin will separate you from God and it will keep you from hearing God. And that's why you've got to open up your heart and open up your ear and allow God to speak to you. Preaching is simply making a public announcement. We ought to be heralds of the gospel. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the word of God. That's the assignment. That's the evangelistic assignment that's on every house of God and we cannot afford to shirk that duty before God. Preaching is an announcement to the world. According to Matthew 10 and 7, it says, And ye shall go and preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devil. Freely I'm giving it to you. Freely you ought to give it away. Tell the world, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Though your sins be red as crimson, I will wash you and make you whiter than snow. John 3.16, perhaps the most famous scripture in all of the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so he has given us that mandate. Those of us who are believers of this gospel, we've got to preach this word. The power of preaching is to see the transformation of a heart that has been laden and plagued with sin. Ah, uh, if you hear this gospel, if you preach this gospel, that's why the Bible says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. You see, every human being after the fall of Adam that was born into this world is born with a veil over their heart. Ah, oh, but the power and the preaching of the gospel ah, oh, can pierce that veil. Come out from among them, that's what the Bible says, and be separate, saith the Lord. You're here today because you heard the word somewhere. And I'm telling you, if you preach the word somewhere or wherever you go, there's a soul out there that's waiting to hear the cry of your heart hard and somebody is going to come running with tears laughing under their chin saying what must I do to be saved the hymnologist uh, uh, hymnologist wrote and said what can wash away my sin what can make me whole again no other fount I know nothing but the come on talk back to me yes come on say the power of preaching 
Yeah, it is the announcement to the world. According to Titus 2 and 11 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, that we should live soberly and righteous and godly in this present world. In other words, God wants a witness now. He wants you to show to the world now that the gospel does have power to heal. The gospel does have power to deliver and set you free. The gospel does have power to open up the doors of heaven and let the power of God flow down. That's why somebody sung a song and say, open the flood gates of heaven. Woo! and let it rain. We want the power of God to flow and to rain over all the earth so that mankind can be saved. Yes, the gospel, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of that great God and our Savior. We must preach, and our preaching must be relevant so that the world can hear because the gospel, it brings deliverance. I don't care what you may have been bound by. We believe that the power of the gospel can set you free. I don't care what kind of sickness or disease may have plagued your body or what kind of emotional ailment you may have had. We believe that there's power in the gospel and the word of God and it can bring you out of where you are. I trust you today to bear into the word of God, the power of God and put your faith to work and watch God, work on your behalf. The power of the gospel come to flow. It'll bring peace to your heart, hope to your world. Yes, even your enemy can't stop you when you're standing up under the power of the gospel. Ah, the Bible says your enemy may come one way, uh, but they will have to flee seven ways. Oh, the gospel will bring unity to the body of Christ. When you preach the gospel right, you won't preach a black gospel and a white gospel. You won't preach a, a color gospel. You preach a kingdom gospel because there's only one gospel. That is the good news of the kingdom of God that comes to come to heal and to deliver all mankind. It doesn't matter who you are, how rich or poor you might be. Money is not a criteria. All God wants is a willing heart and a willing mind to say, I hear to the word of God and I hear, I'm here to tell you today God will come in on your situation yes the power of the gospel is an announcement to the world according to 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 he says preach the word Paul tells Timothy here be instant in season and out of season reprove and rebuke Exult with all long suffering, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they will heap for themselves teachers having itching ears, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and turn to foolishness and fable. And so when you preach the gospel right, and when you live the gospel right, it touches heart. It touches mind. It touches spirits. It brings deliverance. It brings healing. There's something about this word that God has put in place. It will make no mistake about your life, or my life, my children's life, nobody that's connected to you. If you put this word to work, it'll work for you. Oh, because there's power. Paul told Timothy to preach the gospel, not gossip. He said be instant. In other words, every minute of the day, if you're waking up in the middle of the night, there ought to be a word on your lip. 
hallelujah, about the goodness of God. Somebody said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cry out. There ought to be a testimony on your heart crying out to God. I thank God for salvation. I thank God for deliverance. I thank you for hope that maketh not a shame. The power of the gospel comes to transform lives. He said, be instant. Every opportunity you get to preach the gospel, say it. Tell it to somebody. He said to reprove. That word reprove means to chastise. It means to scold. It means to reprimand. Oh, yes. You think, you think God is all about just giving you cookies and candies and telling you all about the good stuff and he's not concerned about you getting off course and he won't send corrections? The Bible says if God didn't chastise us, we're bastards. We're illegitimate. We're not his children. Every child, he's going to send a word to you. He's going to get to you somewhere because he wants you to stand up in this world with character, under righteousness, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and declare the unadulterated gospel to the world that Jesus still saved. There's power in the gospel, and he still lives inside of me. Yes, he said to speak the word, speak disapproval of when people get off course with the truth. Yes, he said we ought to be passionate about it, but we must know that we have a responsibility on our hand. Then he said to exalt, to encourage, to assist, to urge by influencing people to do good deeds and to stay in the race. Don't give up on the race. The Bible says uh, the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but you got to have endurance. This is a marathon. You've got to run every day and run at night 24 hours a day. There's no rest for the weary. When you got God on your side, when you mean heaven all the way, you have to understand that you're in spiritual warfare. And sometimes in warfare, you might get wounded, but you got to keep on fighting. That's why Paul says, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the tactics of the enemy. Somebody say the power of preaching. Yes, yes, preaching is what it's going to take. He said the day will come when people will not listen to sound teaching, sound doctrine, so they will find a place to go so the preacher can tell them what they want to hear. It's like a passage under the Old Testament uh, when the folk went out and told the preachers and the prophet, don't preach to us the truth. Give us some smooth words. Give us stuff that will tickle our emotion. And that's what so much of what we call preaching today. And that's why we see so many folk going in and out of church. They're not changing. They're Christian, but in a nightclub the next night, cussing and swearing. They're Christian, but you find them out there drinking and whoremongering. They're Christian, but they're doing everything that the world is doing, but they got a Christian label on their name. The devil is a lie. The Bible says God is not Mark. I'm here to tell you every man is going to have to give an account to God for the life they live in this flesh. So we got to preach this gospel. Preaching and teaching goes together like a hand in glove. Preaching tells you uh, where to go, but teaching tells you what to do when you get there. Preaching proclaims, but teaching explain it defends what you preach preaching is designed to change your direction but teaching is designed to destruct you on your way it gives you spiritual instruction so that you're able to walk out this life preaching is what we need more of in this life eh, because we've got a world out there that's dying and going to hell at breakneck speed, we must go back to the altar of God and cry again to God and tell him to reignite us and give us a new passion in our soul, telling the sinner fresh oil of his anointing on us. We need the power of preaching because Timothy said the time will come when they will not in 
endure sound teaching. The gospel is the only hope for America and the world today. The leaders around the world are doing everything with the secular power, but they don't have the power of the gospel. Only the true believers have that power on their life. And when you've got this power on you, you ought to be effective. Oh, yes. When you've got this power on you, you ought to be able to touch somebody's life. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I want to tell you the gospel has power. I'm telling you, when you look in the gospel, when you look in the book of Acts, when you look in the epistles, you can see the hand of God at work with the power of preaching. Yes, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, when the power of God came in that house, they were sitting around waiting for 10 long days because Jesus told them that I'm going to send you power. He said, I'm going to send you into all the earth, but you can't go until you get filled with power. And so on the day of Pentecost, on that last day, as they were sitting there, the Bible said the day of Pentecost came in and it filled the house. They felt the rushing mighty wind. They felt the power of the Holy Ghost. And it felt like a wind blowing over the house. And it started to blow and they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. It started to blow and folks started getting healed and delivered. And set free and it blow and blow and blow and folk all around came out and said wait a minute something is wrong here this is not supposed to be happening it's too early in the morning these folk are drunk Peter stood up and opened his big mouth all before Pentecost Peter would open his mouth and then he blasphemed God but after the power of the Holy Ghost got on him Peter stood up. He said, well, we're here this morning, and we're having a party, but we're not drunk. As you suppose, we have not been drinking Boom Farm Apple Wine. We have not been drinking Johnny Walker Red. We have not been drinking Slit Smart Liquor Bowl. But what we've been drinking is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We're drunk on the power of glory. We're drunk on the anointing from heaven. Peter said, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah, oh Lord, I'm here to tell you the power of preaching will get the flow of the oil back over the house of God. The power of preaching will get the anointing back in the house of God. The power of preaching will get deliverance back in the pews. Yeah, yeah. He said, behold, behold, I give you power. Ow! The power, God said, I'm putting it on you. I'm going to put it all on you. How bad do you want this power? How bad do you want this anointing? I heard him said, come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I, I'll give you rest. Yeah, you might be troubled in your soul, troubled in your mind, but the power, I said the power, the power of the gospel will change Yes, we've got the power that the world needs. They're not going to find it 
in politics. They're not going to find it in the latest gadget. They're not going to find it on Wall Street. You can have all the money in this world, but it won't give you a good night of rest. Yeah! Without the power of the Holy Ghost working on the inside. Somebody said something on the inside, working on the outside. I felt the change, a change has come over me. Anybody here today felt that power? Anybody here today got a hold that that anointing? One day it got a hold of me. I don't know when you got it. I don't know what your experience was like, but I can tell you when it got a hold of me, I was a bad rascal. I was a booger man trying to find love in all of the round places. But when the power got a hold of me, he took the lust out of my flesh, took the lust out of my mind. No longer am I running from skirt tail to skirt tail, but I'm trying to find the house of God to get down on my knees and tell the Lord, I thank you for the power of preaching. I thank you for the power of the gospel. I'm here to tell you today, if we're going to see this world get on fire, they need a word from God. We can see what has happened over the past 25 years, we've got the gospel in rap. We got the gospel in rhythm. And yes, it's gospel, but it's not changing folk life. The kind of gospel we need, it can see folk delivered. If you say you save, we ought to see the fruit on your life. Yeah, if you've been transformed by the power of God, there ought to be something different about your testimony. Yeah. Yes, there ought to be something about what comes out of your heart and the kind of people that you fellowship with because light and darkness can't hook up together. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. You can't run with the world and then come to God when you want to. He said, come unto me, but you got to come when he call you. Put your hands together and tell the Lord, let this gospel, hey, yeah. let the power of the gospel reign on me. Let the power of the gospel reign in my house. Let the power of the gospel reign over my neighborhood. Let the power of the gospel reign over my job until my boss gets saved, until my co-worker gets saved. Let it reign in my house until all my children catch on fire. Let it rain. Somebody say, rain, 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 power. Woo! Clap your hand and give the Lord a praise. It's time for deliverance in the house of God. We need preachers, not pimps in the pulpit. We need preachers, not pimp with a sweetheart. Two girlfriends on the side. You come in church like a Mac Daddy with all your chest hanging out, with your arms flexing your muscle. That ain't the gospel. That's the lust of the flesh. We got to get it right. We've been watching too much television, too much Mac Daddy on TV. That's why our communities are so corrupted with the church on every corner. It's time to get the right preaching back. Oh! Oh! Oh, yeah! Yes, the gospel that'll transform the broken heart. Yes, when your heart's been broken, to a thousand pieces, the gospel will put you back together again. The gospel that will preach deliverance to the captain, give sight to the blind. Yeah, yeah, 
That's what you've been called to do. If you sign your name on the gospel roll, if you sign up for this new life, then you own the right road. Stand on your feet and tell the Lord, I'm coming back to a new place. Let the power of your word sanctify me one more time. Let the power of your word baptize me one more time. Let the power of your word fill me one more time. Clap your hands and tell the Lord, here I am. Here I am for another feeling. Here I am. Deliver me again. Here I am. Anoint me again with your word. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The power of preaching is what it's going to take to transform our communities. We've watched over the past 50 years after Dr. King has made the most famous speech ever I have a dream in Washington DC and it galvanized people all over the world but shortly afterwards we went back to business as usual now, what we've seen all across America, you know, we're wondering, what are we going to do with our communities? All of our young boys killing each other. People are afraid to go in their house at night because they're driving by and murdering. But then we come home and we sit in front of the television and we watch all these corrupt so-called actors and singers entertain us out on the television half naked giving honor to God, giving honor to God this and that, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and these are the, the, the people that we have idolized to be our examples all is poison that's coming off of the radio stations, that's going into these vulnerable hearts of our young kids. And we're wondering what's wrong. It's right before our eyes. We've accepted the offer from the devil right into our house, into our homes. This is not rocket science. We got to get back to the foundation. We're boasting about churches and, and mega churches all over the world, and we're bragging about how big our church is. And you got the, 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 one of the churches in, in, in Texas, supposedly the largest church in the United States. Yes, it's your happy preacher. That's telling folk gay people are going to heaven. Now, if gay folk are going to heaven, homemongers are going to heaven. Adulterers are going to heaven. That's not in the book that I read. It said all the homemongers shall have their place in the lake of fire. But because we are glamorizing big churches, big ministries, popular preachers, and making them millionaires and billionaires, and right there in that same city, they elected the first openly gay lesbian couple with the happy preacher grinning and, and saying nothing about it. 
when you get a little bald-headed black preacher like me from the country talking this stuff, you look at me like calf looking out a new great gate. But I'm not crazy. I know the truth. The Bible says, wide or broad is the way. Wide is that gate leads to destruction. So get on the Broadway if you like. Go help, hook up with the biggest church you can find and hide in the crowd if you like. Because that's what so many folk are doing. They're not about ministry. They want to be entertained. They will go to work, work 60 hours a week, get their money, pay for their stuff, give God a tip, not a tithe, and forget about this, all the this stuff y'all talking. And with some of the results we're getting, I can understand where some folk are. There's no excuse, but I understand. Because we got so many bad examples misrepresenting God. But let God be true and every man a liar. This gospel that I just got to preaching to you today is the only gospel that's going to set the captive free. The only gospel that's going to deliver the whoremonger, the adulterer, the homosexual, this gospel. But the church has been silenced because we're pacifying all this corruption. And we're doing it because we don't want to see folk leave. We want to continue to get that, get that money out of their pocket at any cost. Don't tell them the truth, just pacify them. We know better than that. You know if you see your child committing, committing something heinous, you got to discipline that child. Or you don't love that child. It's just that simple. So the gospel, we can't, we can't, placate and pacify people when it comes to the word of God. We've got to tell the truth and leave the results to him. But we got too much compromising going on. But I'm here to tell you the preaching of the gospel still have power to deliver. Let's pray. I don't know where you are in your walk with God right now, but this is an individual way. ask you if you need prayer concerning your spiritual condition right now this is your opportunity this is your privilege I surrender all I surrender your cry today slip your hand up and say God I'm giving you everything I'm giving you all of me not just a fraction of my heart oh God I want you to restore me renew me give me new strength give me even a new uh, outlook and insight on you and what you've called me to don't let me become lackadaisical and unconcerned about my soul I can't be careless about my treasure. My soul belongs to you. Take me, Lord. I'm giving you all. I surrender all. I'm going to sing it one more time. 
I surrender all. I surrender worship experience on today for bringing us to this house to this sacred and hallowed place where you've carved out in this little humble spot and built your sanctuary a safe place for your people to come and so here we are again rededicating our hearts rededicating our spirits our lives putting everything that you've given to us on the altar before you forgive us Lord for all of our shortcomings forgive us for our being lax on the things that are most important to you that is the diligence of the work of the kingdom I pray that you touch me again reignite my fire stir me up Lord God let the word reach my ear let it permeate my being touch my heart and renew my joy again. Renew my passion again for worship. Renew my passion of love again for the believer. Renew my passion again for the love for my spouse, my children all around me. Give me a new, a new drive, a new vigor, God. Fresh oil, pour it out on me and start me over again. That the flames of revival stir my heart again fresh in Jesus name I pray thank God clap your hands everybody hallelujah hallelujah come on clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you for the power of the word of God that comes to renew me in the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I feel the presence of the Lord, the breaking of the Spirit, the anointing, deliverance. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Touch your neighbor, tell him, receive the glory. Come on, put your hand on somebody. Tell him, receive the glory. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, receive it. Come on, get it all, get it all, get it all, get it all, get it all. Get it all. I want all, I want all. I want you to have all of me, dear Lord, not just a fraction of me. I'm giving up everything. Hey! Woo! Yeah, hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For another worship experience. Woo! For that new place. Jesus' name. Amen. Take your seats. Take your seats. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Here's my prayer. At this time, we shall continue. I shared with you that we're going to dedicate this mother and baby. Sister Courtney, where are you? Come on. 
to the Lord today. It's good when we understand our roles and commitment. Deacon Johnson, will you come up and assist me? Hallelujah. Pastor Green, Lady Johnson, you all stand as well, and this family is coming. We're all sharing in the life. baby Brother Joseph turn this mic on y'all come up a little closer now y'all are scattered I consider it a privilege to dedicate Isaac to the Lord. It's a good name. Amen. It is a pleasure to have the mommy and the grandparents here and great-grandparents and aunties and uncles and just all these lovely people that are sharing in the life of little brother Isaac. Amen. According to Mark chapter 10, the Bible says, and they brought young children to him that he should touch them and the disciples rebuked those that brought them. Now listen to this. Did you hear what I just, just read? Now, here's Jesus, the, the most powerful figure on the planet. God sent him to the world to restore fallen humanity back to himself. And people were so fascinated by him, they... I mean, he was, he was a, a literally a rock star. And parents wanted their children to touch Jesus. And here are these religious nuts, the preachers, telling the kids, get away from Jesus. Now, how foolish. But do you not know that we do that every day today? We, people, church folk do the same thing today. So we know better because we love our children. Amen? And so here, Jesus saw it and he was angry. That's what the scripture said. When he saw the stupidity of, of, of those religious nuts, he was angry. And he said, let these children come to me and don't forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of heaven. And what he was saying literally if you don't come to me, just like the disposition of a child being childlike, not childish, but childlike, you can't get in here. So he, it was a perfect teachable moment for Jesus, and that is precisely what he did here uh, in this text. And he said, I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you can't get in. And he took the child up in his arms, put his hand on the child, and blessed him. That's what Jesus did. And that's what we should do. Amen. Let's pray. Bow your heads. Dear God, we present to you Isaac as a gift from parents and grandparents who in gratitude having received him from you, now give him back to you. We are mindful this day of how that Jesus called the little ones as lamb to his fold and placed his hands of blessings upon them and on their head. 
threw his arms of love around them and gave them the kindliest look. We knowing something of the craving of a child and his innocence is a cry for purity and his weakness is a cry for strength and his helplessness is a cry for protection and its heart is a great plea of love. Grant that as Isaac grows, that he will grow in the wisdom and the favor of the kingdom of God and unto yourself. Preserve Isaac when danger threatens the infancy of childhood. Undergird and strengthen him in moments of youthful temptation. Lead him to accept you as his personal Savior through our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Say amen. To you, the congregation who are witnessing this dedication today, I would say to you, dearly beloved, you are privileged to witness the coming of the parent, grandparents, and well wishes to dedicate this child to the gracious and loving care and the keeping of God our Father. God grant that we who are gathered today in worship shall earnestly assume these parents' responsibility for this child. Christian training, in as much as all of us, shall exercise influence upon him in one way or another. Now, if you, the members, of this congregation and this community are willing to help raise Isaac to be personally involved in his life should it come to that. You see him doing something, saying something. You don't just say, well, it's not my child. I don't have nothing to do with that. Now, I know with some people, kids, you, you, you probably have to do it because they're crazy. They'll, they'll go off on you for helping their child. But when you're in a family like this and you know you got parents and grandmother will appreciate you for chastising their child, then you play your role. Now, if you're willing to do that, I encourage you to let's labor together. We we'll ask you to pray for this child that he might be led years of personal accountability to abhor that which is evil and cling to that which is good. Courtney, as you present Isaac for dedication to God, I'm asking you, are you willing to rededicate yourself to the maintenance of a spiritual house to be an example to this child to make sure you give him all of the right spiritual nourishment as well as physical nourishment. Guard the company he's going to keep from time to time. Be careful of even the people that you let him go and, and spend time with. Make sure you know who they are. Just don't let your child go with anybody. I don't care if they go to church. That's your responsibility. Rededicate yourself honor God's word, keep him in high reverence, that Isaac may, of his own free choice, because salvation is something that we have to do on our own volition. And I can tell you, the better the example that you set for him, the easier it's going to be for that child to come to the Lord. I can tell you hands down that people who reject church are literally rejecting parents if they're in church. So let's be a good example. And if you're willing to do that, I want you to say I will. Amen. Because you recognize the spiritual and physical and moral responsibility of parenthood and your dependence upon God for strength and wisdom to faithfully discharge the duties of parents 
Do you now present your child in dedication to God, seeking divine blessings and guidance for his life? Say, I do. Deacon, would you get a hold to Isaac for me and just hold him up? Bring him over here so I can touch him. Hello, big man. Look down at his hands. He's down there. High five me if you like. There you look at him. He's got it together now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Isaac, I dedicate you now to the Lord. In the name of the Father. Now he's putting his head so I can touch him now. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Having heard the vows of parents, we earnestly believe that they will strive to protect or by precept and example using the many agencies that we have here at New Vision and even across the community to train Isaac in love towards God and the knowledge of his son, Jesus Christ. We therefore commend Isaac to the gracious keeping of God. We therefore commend him to these loving family members and well-wishers. He's not going to remem uh, remember this day, but hopefully you got uh, lots of photos to remind him of it. So that as Christ's minister, I ask you to tell him about this setting and uh, so that he can very early in his life make his vow to the Lord and walk with him as well. Let's pray once again. God, our Father, we praise and thank you for children for their simple-mindedness and for their spirit of wonder, their unexpectedness, their affection, their appreciation for beauty, their fun for the goodness of life, for the reverence of children among the roughest of men and women, for the wise love of parents and for all happy and healthy home where children grow up loving what is fair, good, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let your blessings be upon Isaac. Guide these parents, we pray, by your light and your truth that they may perform their duties toward him. May they not become discouraged or careless in a task which may sometimes seems too hard for them alone. Remind them that your strength is made perfect in their weaknesses. And grant counsel to these parents as they shall seek to train and teach this child in the way of our Lord and how to be productive in life. We ask these blessings in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask those of you standing around, join hands together and repeat the Our Father prayers. Our Father, go ahead and say it. you to turn around, take your cameras and go that way and get a couple of front shots, will you? Turn face, face, to, face the camera. First lady and uh, uh, brother over here, is, they're taking the camera shots. Get a, get a nice, nice shot so we can put it up on Facebook. 
Yeah, we do social media around here too.